We are at part two of my multimeter tutorial. And if you remember video one, I described some tick tracers to you guys. Well, now we're getting to the meters. It's a little bit more sophisticated, a little bit more fun. Um, if Again, if you read the description, I have all these meters in my description, links to Amazon, if you want to purchase one of them. Um, but here we go. I'm going to get into explaining the functions and uh, some of the cool things that each one of them may have. The first thing I'll start at here is my Fluke 375 FC. This is one of my favorite amp clamps I have because of the fact that I can fit larger conductors inside of it. In comparison to the T5600, I mean, you can fit a pretty big conductor inside of this right here, but I'm an electrician and an engineer, so sometimes I need to get a couple cables under the same wire if I'm looking for amperage. Now, in comparison to a normal handheld multimeter, the handheld multimeter by far, which I'm going to show you in video three, you can jump to that. I'm going to have a link to that. If you want to jump to that, you don't care about these. It's by far the most um, useful meter. It has all the options plus, um, but these amp clamps, they, they're set apart specifically because they can do this built-in current meter right here. So if you guys don't know what voltage is or what amperage is, I'm going to put up another video kind of describing voltage, voltage and amperage so you can get a, a clear understanding of what we'll be testing and what I'll be describing here. If you need that, you can check that out. I'll put it up in the upper right hand corner. Otherwise, um, let's get started. You can always comment and subscribe to my channel. Um, but let's move forward. Here we go. All right, so starting here with the Fluke 375 FC and my Fluke T5600. Something you'll notice about this T5600 right here, the cables are built in, so you can't really remove them. Um, but on the Fluke 375 FC, they're not built in. If you see down here, um, I can unplug them and pull them out. But the thing about cables on meters is you kind of got to make sure that you plug the right lead into the right position. Um, right here you see common, that means common. The black lead goes in the common, and the red lead goes in whatever mode you're going to set your meter on. So since we're going to do voltage, this, if you see right here, it has a volt symbol and an ohm symbol. Since we're going to be using uh, testing volts and ohms quick here, I'm going to plug this red lead in there. You always want to make sure you check your leads because on uh, more sophisticated meters, um, you have to make sure you're plugged into the right location. Very important. So since I got my common plugged into my black plugged into common like it like it should be and my um, my red lead plugged into the voltage, um, I'm going to actually have you look at this also. There's this CAT3, as we talked about in the last video, CAT3, 1,000 volts. So this is good for Category 3 up to 1,000 volts. Um, and CAT4, it's good up to 600 volts. Another thing you always want to check before you do any meter measurements is I'm going to have you look at this lead right here. This meter lead also has a category rating. So this is good up to 1,000 volt in, in a Category 3 environment. And if you remember, a Category 3 environment is like distribution power. Um, category 4 in, environment is more utility wires and overhead lines and uh, um, just outdoor stuff in general. So if I was measuring anything outdoors, it would be Category 4, 600 volts. And I'm not even going to hit anywhere close to 600 volts, so these leads are good. And my meter is good because it says that's already rated for it. Another thing to check here is that this is good up to 10 amps. 10 amps is a pretty standard rating for leads um, if you do an amperage check with the leads. But on these meters, we're not doing any amperage checks with our leads. Because if you remember when I pointed out this, um, these leads can only do voltage and ohms. Never says on there. There's no A on there. So the leads can't do amperage. Okay. So here we go with voltage. If we want to do a voltage, that little squiggle you see above the V here, I don't, if you're focused on it, the little squiggle you see above the V, that means AC current. So if we want to measure voltage AC, and what I mean by that is voltage AC is in a house, or it's distribution power, um, alternating current voltage, well, voltage AC. That would be like a receptacle in your house or if you work on three phase, 480 volt three phase or some people call it 110 volts AC. It's the same thing as 120 volts AC. It's more commonly 120 if you actually measured it, but a lot of older electricians call it 110 because of the voltage drop they experience sometimes downstream. Um, same thing with 240. Um, sometimes people call it 220. 
Uh, it's just the voltage drop downstream. 240, 220, it's sort of the same thing. There's a 10% voltage allowance, um, a voltage drop allowance expected on most electronics and systems. So if we were measuring voltage AC, yeah, I'd go to the V with the squiggly above it. That little squiggly, that's same thing if you were checking, let's say, um, a receptacle for your stove top. It's always going to be AC, so you would set it to volts AC. You would, uh, if you're measuring voltage, you always need a common reference point. Voltage builds up. Voltage will always be on something that resists the flow of current. So anytime something resists or blocks the flow of current, a voltage will be present. So if, for example, if I were to have a battery like this, I actually have a nine volt battery here because these two leads are not connected. Technically the air is blocking the flow of current from here to here. So there'll be a voltage present on here and this is just a nine volt battery. So if I actually take my meter and I set it to the V with the line above it, the V with the line above it, the straight line, not the squiggly line, the straight line means voltage DC. So DC voltage are things such as batteries. Uh, your car battery, it's commonly 12.6 volts DC. A nine volt battery has nine volts DC. Um, a one and a half, a double A battery or a triple A battery, those are all one and a half volts DC. That's the expected voltage on the battery. When the battery starts to die down, the voltage is less. So I'm just gonna demonstrate quickly a test for you here. If I take my black lead, remember when measuring voltage, you always need a common point. So my common point is my negative. Negative is most often the common point in the US. So I have my black lead on the common negative lead of the battery. And if I take this right here and I put the, uh, my probes on the positive lead, you can see it says 8.7 volts DC. So this battery is, this, this nine volt battery is actually a little low. So it means it's getting close to being dead um, because the voltage is a little bit less than nine. A good nine volt battery usually reads a little bit above nine volts. Same thing with a car battery. If you're measuring a car battery, a car battery is normally 12.6 DC volts. That's a good car battery. Um, anything below the 12 volt range, that's a low car battery. Or common, I should say, a common car battery. Vehicles also come in 24 volts, but the, the most common is 12 volts. So there, we just did a battery check with the DC voltage. Um, I have it, again, on the voltage. DC is the one with the line above it. So now, if I wanted to measure ohms, ohms is the resistance measurement. This also has a continuity symbol above it. If you see them echo lines, it looks like the sound uh, a symbol that sound, they draw it for sound or echo, but it's the continuity line. Um, continuity means that two things have um, low resistance. You can see it beeping and 0.0, .0 resistance. That technically means that there is no resistance. It's easy for electricity to flow. All I had to do was change it to this ohms continuity section. Ohms and continuity, they're sort of the same thing. The continuity will beep when the resistance is low. When the resistance gets higher, this beeping sound will go away, but it'll still show you the resistance here. Another thing is that this meter doesn't have really precise values. It sort of generalizes. If you see, when I go back to this volts DC, if I take this reading, if I go back on here and do this measurement one more time, 8.7. Um, some more sophisticated meters or the meter you're going to see in my video three is going to have a couple decimal places rather than just one decimal place. So this is 8.7. I don't know if it's 8.72 or if it's 8.70. Um, that's just another thing to note about it. They're not all that accurate. If you need to know some power supplies, um, DC power supplies in industry, it's they have to be very precise to run electronics. Like a five volt power supply has to be 5.00. Um, there, there's some applications where precision is important and a meter like this won't tell you that. I'm going to go over to my T5600 quick and I'm going to go to the voltage setting on here. This is the same thing except if you see here it says automatic selection. So you don't need to say volts AC or volts DC. This meter automatically will do that figuring out for you. 
It'll sense to see if there's volts AC or DC present, and whichever one is more present, it'll display. So if I go on here, you can see this one even has less precision. This just says nine volts, nine DC, because it averages the voltage it sees. Where the 375FC meter said 8.7, this one says, now it says, yep, there, nine volts. So if I were to take this fluke right here and measure this battery, I would think, hey, this is a good battery, nine volts. But a more precise meter actually tells me it's a little low, it's 8.7 volts. If I even got more precise, I might have a meter with three decimal places tell me it's 8.65 volts, 8.653 or something. And then you can see this battery is actually a low battery, where if I measured it with a T5600, it generalizes, gives me nine volts, but it doesn't tell me specifically it's low. When we check for resistance, something happens inside the meter, it changes the setting, and instead of actually accepting current into the meter to measure how much voltage is present, what it actually does is it puts out a little bit of current to try and measure. So one thing you want to remember is that my meter leads, I have it plugged into the ohm slot, and my common is still in the common slot. This black lead almost always goes in the common spot. There's, there's no instances when it doesn't. Um, so if I want to measure ohms, I set it to ohms, what, what happens is a little bit of current tries to push out here, come back in here, and it does an internal voltage measurement of itself to see how much resistance or how much current's able to flow. So right now I'm actually pushing a little power. You don't ever, on the ohm setting, on any meter, never put it on ohms and put it next to a power source. You don't want to measure a receptacle or measure a battery when you're on the ohm setting because if you remember what I said, what happens is the meter is actually supplying some power and you don't want this power to come in contact with that power. You'll blow a fuse inside of your meter if you do that. So right here I have a common auto fuse and I have it on the ohm setting. If I put one lead right there and one lead on the other side of the fuse, you can see it says there's 0.1 ohms. It's very low resistance and it's beeping. That means that's a good fuse. That's something you would measure with the ohms reading. Right here I have a resistor if you're into doing electronics. This resistor right here, when you're measuring ohms also, a lot of times for fuses or heaters or anything, it doesn't matter which direction you put your meter leads. You're just pumping some electricity, you're pumping some current through, trying to pump it through, and it's telling you how easily it can get through. So if I put it on here, it says that's a 9.83K ohm resistor, which is accurate, because this is says, if you, if you read the color codes, it's a 10K resistor. So, 9.83k ohm if you notice it was giving me an ohm reading but it wasn't beeping anymore like i said it only beeps when the ohms are very low and low ohms continuity are fuses and solid wires and very low resistance motor leads or very low resistance heaters so you can see i've got about 9.83 the meter is always going to bounce a little bit around depending upon how good of a connection you have with your leads this says right here 9.84k ohms. I'm going to just demonstrate this quick on my T5600. Same thing, it's got ohms and continuity. If I put my meter leads, another thing about that little voltage I told you on this, it's low enough, you're never going to get shot from it. It's it, The leads are meant to touch. See, right here you can hear this beeping and you see a 2 ohm resistance. These things the amount of current that this meter is pumping out for ohms is never enough to affect anybody or a person or an animal or anything. So you don't have to worry about that. You can put it right on your finger or anything like that. You just don't want to put it near another power source. That's the only problem with it. You'll destroy your meter by doing that. So if I measure across this resistor, it looks confusing. What's going on here? Well, if you look close at my meter, it says it can only read up to 1K ohm. There's another limitation of this meter right here. I have a 10K ohm resistor and my meter can't tell me that. So that's another limitation of this T5600. If I had a 100 ohm resistor, all well, it would tell me. Or if I had a normal heating coil on my oven, I wanted to measure to see if it was broken. A heating coil that's broken, it'll say open lead as if the current can't get through it at all. But if it's good, it'll be in the, in the lower ohms, like 15 ohms or 50 ohms or 100 ohms or something along them lines. 
but open lead means the heater would be bad. But this T5600, when I go across a good fuse, it beeps and shows me about two ohms, which is good. I'm not making good contact there, but. So that's a demonstration of when you would want to use ohms, when you want to see if there's a good solid connection for electricity to pass through. So we covered voltage and ohms. The only thing left to cover is amps here. If you look, if I set this to amps, you can see down here, um, if you look down here, it says category three, 600 volts. And if you look up here, it actually shows the amperage symbol. So it says it can read up to 100 amps, but it has to be in this. You don't measure amps with these leads. You measure amps through this, and it's a, sort of a non-contact measurement. If you notice here, this has only AC amps. It can only measure AC amps in here. Where this Fluke 375FC, it has AC amps or DC amps, which is a nice feature. All right, so we're gonna go to a quick demonstration here. I got this Fluke T5600. And I got this panel cover removed, and I got some breakers out, actually, just so you can see a better representation. So right here on this panel, I got a 20-amp breaker. Um, another thing to note, you should always wear gloves when you're near an energized source like this. If I go and I turn my meter on the amp AC with my Fluke T5600, all you have to do is take the wire that you're trying to measure, and you go around... It. And you can see this right here has 1.7 amps of load going through this breaker right now. If I pull it away, zero again. One thing you can notice is that you want to make sure you put the wire all the way down at the bottom because it says different number until you get it all the way in. 1.7 amps. That is why these are nice. See, because I don't have to break any connections to measure amperage with a lot of the older ammeters or the analog ammeters you have to break wires and put the meter in series with the current path with these amp clamps you can just put your meter right next to the wire and never actually have to disrupt the, the load so that's the t5600 and quickly here i'm going to move over to the 375 fc if i put it on amps ac setting i just have to push this and kind of wrap it around the cable and you can see this has the same reading of 1.6 amps. Um, another option on here is it has hertz in yellow. If you come here and hit this yellow button, it'll tell you the frequency of electricity AC going through this line. And there it is, 60 hertz since we're in the U.S. Um, one other thing I would like to show you also, which is sort of important here, is if I go back to the amps setting and I do min max, I can have min max mode on and I can kind of let this hang here and I can go um, go do something else for a while, come back. I can take this off and see how it kind of locks in the max. If I jog through min average and max or min average current and max, it shows me what occurred the duration that the meter was on. After a while, this meter will shut off, so you don't want to go too long, but still, that's a nice feature. If you want to clear the min-max option, just hold it down for a few seconds. Inrush is the same sort of thing. You can put it on inrush, and it's watching. It's waiting for a big load of current to come through. This is good if you're trying to check your AC unit or a motor starting up to see how much current comes running through the line. When motors or AC compressors or something along the line of an inductor starts up, it has a big rush of current immediately. And after the initial rush of current, a normal current will flow again. So that's our Fluke 375 FC. All right, guys, just to summarize, we went through this Fluke T5600 and through this Fluke 375 FC. Um, in my opinion, this is by far the superior meter. It shows you more precision, has more options, can read higher resistance readings other option the Fluke has is this particular meter has the Fluke Connect, which means you can download an app and you can graph and monitor the actual current over, over uh, I believe it's Bluetooth, over, over Bluetooth from uh, your phone. So yeah, that's kind of like a summary of all what these meters have to offer. The only other thing I didn't really mention is the hold button they put on here. That's sort of if you're 
you're measuring something and you can't really see the screen, you just hit the hold button and you can pull it out and see what it said. Um, hit the hold button again to clear, clear the reading on the screen. Both nice meters, they both have their applications. Um, but yeah, if I were to recommend, check out my description below. I got links to both of them, but I would recommend if you have the money, obviously this is a little bit more expensive. If you have the money, the 375FC is a lot better meter for an amp clamp. Um, in video number three, part three of this series, I'm going to show you uh, Fluke 87V, True RMS Multimeter. We'll get to that in our next video. So thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up or subscribe. Um, give some comments if you guys have any tips or suggestions for me on videos in the future. Thanks a lot.